Greetings. This is Ms. Mr. No Face. A hadith is a story of Muhammad and his early followers. In order to be considered sahih, that is, authentic, the chain of people who transmitted it or the isnad must be known and deemed trustworthy. This sahih hadith relates an important story that illustrates the different punishments prescribed for sexual relations outside of marriage, depending on marital status. Sahih Bukhari, Volume 8, Number 815 Narrated Abu Huraira and Zayd bin Khalid While we were with the Prophet, a man stood up and said to the Prophet, I beseech you by Allah that you should judge us according to Allah's laws. Then the man's opponent, who was wiser than him, got up saying to Allah's apostle, Judge us according to Allah's law, and kindly allow me to speak. The prophet said, Speak. He said, My son was a laborer working for this man, and he committed an illegal sexual intercourse with his wife. And I gave one hundred sheep and a slave as a ransom for my son's sin. Then I asked a learned man about this case, and he informed me, that my son should receive one hundred lashes and be exiled for one year, and the man's wife should be stoned to death. The prophet said, By him in whose hand my soul is, I will judge you according to the laws of Allah. Your one hundred sheep and the slave are to be returned to you, and your son has to receive one hundred lashes and be exiled for one year. O oh, Unaeus, go to the wife of this man, and if she confesses, then stone her to death. Unaeus went to her, and she confessed. He then stoned her to death. When I read this hadith for the first time, I was struck with the apparent unfairness of stoning the woman while the man was merely lashed and exiled. However, this was not because she was a woman. It was because she was married. Had the man been married, Muhammad would have prescribed the same punishment for him. So on the surface, this seems to be a fairly meted out, if brutal, punishment. But there are a couple of problems. Women get pregnant, and this, if her husband denies paternity, may serve as evidence of adultery. Also, if a woman is raped, her testimony is not equal to a man's, and she risks severe punishment if her accusation is deemed unfounded. In the end, then, Islam's laws on adultery are slanted against women and facilitate the evil acts of men who would take advantage of these God-given iniquities. Let me anticipate the apologetics. Perhaps it's just our human point of view that makes this seem evil, and all will be fair in the end, presumably in heaven. And so, Allah's ethics, like his very being, lay conveniently beyond any test or verification. Doesn't that seem a little suspicious? Mm -hmm.